Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, it's that time of the year where I get busy turning my roast into jerky. And today I'm going to be working with elk roasts. I've got two of them here and a third one I'm going to be cutting up. So today I'm going to actually start from start to finish instead of like I did last year where I just showed marinating the meat. I'm going to show you how I make my marinade but this is just a guideline because I make it different every year. I don't stick to a specific recipe. I just start throwing stuff in and then I taste it as I go to get an idea of what I want. And I'm going to try two different kinds today and also give you some ideas for other kinds that you can make so that you can be creative and come up with what sounds good to you because it's just like a lot of things. It's a lot easier than you think. It's just knowing some of your basic ingredients and what's best to use. All right, so let's get started. Now you can see here I've started cutting up some of my meat already and you can see how thin these slices are. Now this is not frozen at all and I'm cutting, I'm still able to cut these very thin. Obviously the easiest way to cut a roast for in, into thin slices is to freeze it partially or if it's already frozen thaw it out partially however if you have a good sharp knife and you're just you know patient you can get some good decent thin sli decently thin slices by just going for it and I'm not that concerned the main reason I don't bother with the freezing and then thawing thing is because I know me, I get so busy with so much going on that um, if I had it frozen completely first and then thawed it out, I would forget about it and then it would be completely thawed by the time I got to it. Or if I was to try to part, put it in the freezer, unfrozen and partially freeze it, I would forget about it, even with a timer, <laughs> and, and then it would end up uh, hard as a rock and I wouldn't be able to cut it so I'd have to wait for it to thaw and then it would be uh, all thawed out. I mean it's just it's kind of a no uh, a non-win situation for me to do it that way but that's just me you might have a better method. Me I'm in and out of the house and all around that even if I set a timer the chances are I'll probably not hear it by the time it's to the point that it's ready to slice. So you can do this in its raw form obviously as you get down to the end pieces it's going to be harder I do not have any specific rhyme or reason of how my slices are so when I get down to pieces like this I may cut it differently some say cut it crosswise some say cut it lengthwise I just cut it however it works it's jerky for crying out loud so it really doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned and it always turns out delicious so before I I won't finish cutting all that right now I'll do the rest later off camera, I want to get busy showing you how I make the marinade. My basic ingredients for my marinade are usually going to be Bragg's Liquid Aminos. This is one of the few things I use this in. Um, my homemade vinegar, garlic, onion, and black pepper. And then from there, I'll add other things depending on what I feel like adding to it. But typically, this is what I'm going to stick with. Oh, and then also I'll be adding some water to it depending on um, how strong I want the mixture. Now, today I'm going to be trying doing two different types. And since I'm trying to get away a little bit more from the soy products, even a good, a good product like Bragg's Liquid Aminos, it's still soy. So... Um, I'm going to be trying to make a batch with the organic coconut aminos and I really really like these but the difference is is these are far less salty and a little on the sweet side so this would especially be good for if you're wanting to make a teriyaki jerky and I'll also be adding some of the black lava salt that um, I, I don't think I've ever talked about this in the video but I've been using it for a couple of years and I'll link to this below it's really good salt it just kind of has its interesting places but it's just a sea salt with um, coconut charcoal added to it so it just has a different flavor it's just it's really good so since the coconut aminos have very little salt content in them um, I'm going to go ahead and use this in combination but one has to keep in mind this particular salt is very salty unlike certain other mineral salts seem to be not as salty so you got to adjust your ingredients accordingly so let me start with this batch here so I'm going to do if I can remember I'm going to try doing about one part one part one part and that's the sauce 
or the aminos. So one cup and then one cup of the vinegar. And then I might add up to a cup of water. I'm gonna taste it before as I go, because I may not want to add water to this because of its it just has a much lighter flavor than your soy sauce. And then I'll add uh, maybe about a teaspoon of the black lava salt. Love black pepper in our jerky, so about two teaspoons of that to this small batch. This is going to be a smaller batch since I'm trying it out. And one to two teaspoons of onion powder, or granulated onion, or granulated garlic, and one to two teaspoons of granulated garlic. How about at least two teaspoons? That's the onion. Ah, getting myself all confused. Let's put a little bit more garlic in there. Now, you're going to want to taste this before you add your meat to see if this is where you want it. You can add a little bit of oil to this, like olive oil or avocado oil. I'm just going to leave that out this time. All right, so that could use just a little bit more salt. So I'm going to put in another teaspoon of this. You want a little bit more of a salt content when you're making jerky because that does help preserve it and just give it that flavor. Um, of course, you have to be too careful because you're dehydrating it, so it's, uh, you know, all the flavors are going to intensify. Now, I don't think I'm going to add any water to this. I'm going to leave this as is. I'm liking the taste of it. It is on the sweeter side, and that's why I would say if you want to go with a teriyaki, I would add at least a half cup of honey or molasses to this, and then put in maybe a one one to three teaspoons of ginger and sesame oil and that would give it a really good um just a nice teriyaki flavor that i think would be really yummy however with our jerky we like to keep it a little bit more simple so i'm not going to do that on that today now for the basic recipe that i use most of the time i'm going to do and since this is going to be a bigger batch I'm going to be putting more in here but I'm still going to start with a cup at a time because most likely I'm going to have to add water to this so we'll do one cup of the Bragg's amino one cup of my homemade vinegar this is the peach vinegar by the way if anybody's wondering and then as far as the spices I'm going to double up on the amount I use in this since it's going to be a bigger batch. Even though I'm starting off with less liquid, I want to see what it tastes like first. And obviously I'm not going to be adding any salt to this because it's going to be salty enough with the liquid aminos in there. A little more garlic. You know how it is. Okay, and then lots of black pepper. And then we're going to mix that in there. Now, I used to add liquid smoke to this, but there's a little bit of controversy over the liquid smoke and it being a carcinogen. However, if you decide to add it, you only need a tiny bit. It's just such a small amount and you're really getting very little of it in there. So just consider that. Again, I mean, we try to be as healthy as possible. But sometimes it's just nice to enjoy things that we really like and not have to live in fear of every little thing either. Again, so that's, I mean, that's why I'm still going to use my, the liquid aminos from time to time, even though I try to avoid soy as much as possible for health reasons. I still think this is the healthiest you're going to go when it comes to a soy product. Okay, so now I want to taste this to get an idea how much water I'm going to add to it. Okay. So I'm going to put in about a half cup of water to this and some other ideas that you can do, I'm actually going to put in a whole cup. Now some other ideas you can do, you can give it a more Italian flavor by adding some tomato powder and um, rosemary, oregano, and of course lots more garlic. All right, that's pretty good just as it is. Though I think it, as far as the, the liquid contents, but I think it could use more spices. So I'm gonna put in a lot more garlic, onion, 
Whoa. And black, whoops. And black pepper. Oh, turmeric. There's another good thing you could add. So I'm just trying to give you a lot of ideas that you can think about. So start with small amounts and just kind of mix it together, even if it's just like maybe a quarter of a cup that you've got total. So you can taste it and see what you think. So you're not wasting your stuff and you go, ooh, I didn't like the turmeric. Oh, I didn't like the rosemary. Just experiment with it first. And um, But if you're wanting just a basic recipe, this is a good place to start right here. Then what you'll do is you'll just start adding your meat in there. And for me, I like to let it marinate for 24 hours. And periodically making sure that I have enough marinade in here that it, all the meat is going to stay under it. But I still um, like to periodically go through and stir it up throughout the day. And then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll lay all the pieces out and on my dehydrating rack that I'm going to be putting on my wood stove. This is all going to be done off grid and um, I'll show you how I do that. Um, I've never actually used an electric dehydrator for doing jerky. I've always done it this way, um, but you can do this on electric dehydrator if you like. I just never use my electric dehydrator during the winter months where we're getting very little solar power. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting up all the roasts and getting get them into the marinades and then I'll show you what I do after that. All right, I have my meat all cut up and sitting in the marinade. Now, I didn't add any more to this marinade. It just ended up filling up as is. And I wanted you to see the color of this meat, these two pieces of meat right here. I left these on top so you could see the difference between the ones that I'd stirred in while I was going. So you'll definitely want to occasionally go through and just stir them through. And they'll get darker in color as it absorbs all the uh, marinade there. So I'm stirring those in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the easiest thing to save space in the fridge, since I don't have lids for these bowls, is these plates fit over the top of these bowls perfectly. And so I can then I can stack them. And then I don't have to use saran wrap or even my waxed. I don't really like using my waxed fabric that I show in this video right up here for this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, for anything that's meat related, I really prefer not to do that. So the plates work really good for this. And so I'm going to put it in the refrigerator like this for the next 24 hours. And then I'll be back tomorrow in this same video. So stick around and show you what I do next to get these dried up and then how I pack them. Well, it's the next day and I'm ready to start putting the venison pieces onto my dehydrating racks and then onto the wood stove. So let's get started on that. Right here are the pieces I marinated in the coconut aminos mixture and then here is the Bragg's liquid aminos mixture and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to put this one back in the fridge for now because I'm pretty sure there's no way I'm going to fit all of this on four racks and I want to make sure I keep them separate so I know which is which so I'm going to start with the big one and put this one back in the fridge and I'll show you how I lay these out and then I'll take you into the living room and show you how they look on the drying rack that holds, holds these uh, mesh racks. Now you could use a, a big fork to get these out, but you're still going to have to handle them with your fingers. And so you might as well just reach in there and grab them. Now I have to admit, I was so busy yesterday, I forgot to come in here and mix these up, but it's looking like they got pretty well saturated in the marinade and that's wonderful. So I'm going to pack them together tight and we'll see how much we can get onto four racks. It's going to take me most of the day to get this dried up. And uh, so I'm thinking I'm probably not going to have enough time to do, if I can't fit it all on four racks, I'm not going to have enough time today to dry it all. And I like to keep an eye on it so I don't want any going through the night. Because you're going to need to rotate. When you're doing this on a wood stove like I'm going to be doing it, you need to rotate the drying racks. Some of these pieces are a little on the thicker side, so they're also going to take longer. And 
what I do is I go check them and the dry pieces I start taking off and then I'll condense I'll condense the pieces that still need more drying onto one rack and then just keep working that way and then I'll start jarring them up. One thing I forgot to mention is I have, I'm laying each rack on top of a, this uh, plastic cutting board. I never use it as a cutting board, but it does come in handy for stuff like this because it fits perfectly and over time it got a little bit warped. So it kind of concaves in this way. And then what, so I can set the rack on top of these and then carry it like this one at a time into the living room so I'm not dripping this stuff all over my floor on the way. So just a little tip there on uh, something you can do if you have to transport it is just, you know, set your rack over something and uh, do it like that. Okay, I'll be back when my trays are full and I've got the rack all filled up in there. All right, so I'm in here in my living room. I've got, uh, I've got the jerky all on the trays or the soon-to-be jerky and um, as far as these kind of trays go, if you're interested in building one of these for yourselves, these particular ones are kind of hard to find. The only place we have found them is in our local grocery store, our local remote town grocery store. I have looked all over online for these, but you can also, if you're going to build your own setup, and you can find a video on how Mr. Rain did this right up here. If you're going to build your own, um, just find whatever racks that you would like to use. A lot of times cooling racks will work really good, but the special thing about these is they have a nice fine mesh on them, making them good for drying everything from herbs to jerky. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is the jerky is the only thing I'll dry on this that low to the wood stove. And so what I do is throughout the day, is I just keep rotating the racks and keep rotating them and then turning them because obviously it's going to be hotter back there close to the, um, you know, the pipe. And so, um, you know, it's really important to keep a good eye on that. But the nice thing about jerky, you know, here is that you want it a hotter heat anyway because you're cooking it and drying it at the same time. And it's going to have a really long shelf life once you have it fully dry and vacuum sealed into your jars so um and also down here i don't worry about this i just let it drip on the wood stove when i'm all done i'll just scrape it off with a paint scraper however if you're doing this on your own wood stove and you're concerned about the mess you can just put a layer of tin foil on the bottom to catch it all i would rather not waste the tin foil myself so i i'll just scrape it i don't mind that little bit of extra work um and then you can use this same method in your conventional oven. And um, I, I do believe they make some cheap, uh, cheap little jerky drying racks that you can find on Amazon. It seems like I came across some. And I will go ahead and link to those below if you're not interested in building your own setup. But um, there, in your conventional stove, you probably won't have to watch it as closely. You're just going to want to set your heat kind of low and, uh, you know, and just you'll still want to check on them but you're probably going to have you're not going to have to worry so much about like these lower racks here these will burn if i don't keep an eye on them oh and i didn't manage to get every single piece from that big bowl on here i have a few more pieces to do but what i'll do is as i get some dry pieces ready to pull off i'll put those last few pieces on and i should have all that big bowl done today and then i'll just do the smaller bowl tomorrow most likely Okay, I'll be back after a bit. Most of my elk jerky is done now. I do have one more tray left and I'm hoping I can fit the rest of it in these jars right here. And I wanna show you what, how some of them turned out and then I'm gonna show you how I pack them away. So here is some really nice looking pieces, very dry and ready to package up. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that your jerky is fully cooled before you put it in the jars or at least before you seal them up because otherwise they're going to sweat in there, you're going to get moisture and that's going to be a problem. Now this jar right here is a jar of beef jerky from 2016. I don't, we just went through the last jar of 2015 jerky, I'd be showing you that and um, I've had no issues with it. Ever. I've had it last two to three years before we used it up and it was still good. 
Um, I could probably last much longer than that, but we usually use it up within a year to two years. Um, so I can't tell you for sure, but I would think it would. As long as your jar stays sealed, there's no problem. So you can look close and see. Anything you see that's kind of whitish looking, that's nothing but fat. It's perfectly good. So what I do, and honestly, I prefer wide mouth jars for this, but I'm all out in pint size now. This size here ends up being just a little too big. But I'm all out of my wide mouth pint size jars. Um, these are not full yet. This one here, let's see. This one here is ready. You don't want to get it so full. I'll stick a couple more little pieces in here. Too full or your jar will not properly seal. Um, if it's pushing up at the, towards the top at all, it's not going to get a good seal. So this time you actually get to see me do this with a regular mouth, the regular mouth attachment. So that's why it's a good idea to have, get the set of two. Yes, it'll come with a superfluous hose that you don't need if you have the brake cleaner. But if, you have, if you're going to use your food saver, you're going to need that hose. Me, I like the brake bleeder because not only is it an off-grid way I can do this and a little more handy, I find it just seals better than the food saver does. So you just stick your tip in there of your brake bleeder, hold it in, and pop up to PSI 15, which for this will be very quick. It just depends on what you're packing. And then it should be all sealed. And then, since this previously had blackberry syrup in it, marked with permanent marker, I spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there and rub it in. Some of it scrubbed off when I washed the lid. Again, you can reuse these lids again and again and again for vacuum sealing like this. And then I'll just write on it uh, Elk Jerky 2017. And, and I like to go ahead and put the band on there good and tight to just to make sure it's just a, a safety measure, but it's probably not necessary. I've never had one of my jerky jars ever lose its seal. So there you go. And I'll give you an update since I'm not going to be able to get around to drying the coconut amino jerky until tomorrow. I'll give you an update down the road in some other video to let you know what I think in comparison between that and the Bragg's Liquid Aminos jerky. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care.